Hello and welcome to another episode of Paint by Minis. As always, my name's Adam. And in today's episode, we're doing a little bit of a special two for one offer. Not only am I gonna show you how to paint some black Templar Space Marines, which are probably up there with my favorite chapters, but we're also gonna be painting them with a new technique to me, which is stippling with a sponge. Now, before we jump to the bench and I show you how exactly we're gonna be utilizing the stippling and painting the Black Templars, I thought I'd just briefly mention that I have now got an Instagram account under the same name, Paint by Minis. I'll put a little link down in the video description below and I'd really appreciate if you could head over, you can see some work in progresses and some various miniatures that haven't been featured on the channel. So without any further ado, let's jump to the bench and let's get painting. So use whatever sponge you have to hand. I would recommend it being a finer sponge rather than a much broader, more airy sponge. Because we're working on such a small area, the tighter and smaller the sponge is, the easier it will be to get the paint where we want it. To have better control over the sponge and its application, I find it easier to rip off a small square, wind it up, and you can use pliers or something similar to get a better hold of the sponge and use it to get into smaller areas that you would usually find difficult if you were just using your fingers. So now we've got the right type of sponge, I'll briefly cover the general idea of what we're trying to achieve with this. So we want a really rough textured look to our black armour because black is quite a flat colour. This is a perfect opportunity to give it some texture and make it not so monotone. So what we're going to do is sponge on brighter and brighter layers of grey and blue to give it a specular highlight in the highest points, but still some visual interest down in the darker areas. Now, this is very similar, if not exactly the same, as the normal stippling technique that you would usually use with a paintbrush. The idea of using a sponge here is just to get a much more higher level of randomness in the distribution of the spots of paint. But not only that, it's to make it just a lot more quicker and more accessible. You don't have to worry about where in particular you're placing the paint or anything like that. The sponge is doing all of that for us. So all I've been doing here in the background is preparing our colours for stippling on the wet palette. And what I've got is the original black colour that you would have base coated the model in. So for me, it's Molotto all for one black. I'm then also popping on my tried and true grey colour, which I've used in a lot of tutorials if you've seen any other videos. And that is a Vallejo colour from the Panzer Aces line called Dark Rubber. I've also got Rust Grey, but I'm also using a 50-50 mix of Rust Grey and the Dark Rubber. So all in all, you'll have four colours on the palette. You'll have the original black colour, you'll have the dark rubber colour, you'll have the 50-50 mix of rust grey and dark rubber, and then you'll have pure rust grey. So now all the paints are laid out, it's time to start stippling. And I just want to say really quick, I'm sorry about the autofocus in this video. I was trying to shoot this quite quickly, so I relied on autofocus instead of manual focus. So you'll quite often see throughout the video it zooming in and out and trying to adjust. I'm really sorry about that. I try and avoid it where I can, but unfortunately it's just one of those things. The way that I load the sponge is to dip it quite generously into the paint. And I have thinned the paint just a slightly small amount just to stop it globbing and being too thick. I then tap it off onto the palette to get rid of the majority of the paint on the sponge. I then also have a paper towel next to me which I will just blot and do some tests on to make sure that it's coming off in the consistency that I want. So the first colour that we're going to stipple on is going to be the Vallejo Dark Rubber colour. And this is a very heavy layer kind of establishing our base weathering for the model. You're not really looking to put this on any particular high points or anything like that. This is honestly going absolutely all over the model. And also a little caveat, this is going to look really rough and horrible for the majority of the paint job. But once that last highlight comes on, it really ties everything together. So please just stick with it. It will get better, I promise. So work your way around the entire model with dark rubber and it should end up looking something like this. Now I know what you're thinking and this is looking much more like a grey Templar rather than a black Templar. But again, stick with me, don't worry, we will get there. 
So now we've sponge stippled on our layer of dark rubber, we're going to move on to the 50-50 mix of rust grey and dark rubber. Again I'm just picking it up on the sponge, dabbing a bit off on a paper towel and this time I'm just going to try and focus on the areas that would catch the light. Because this is a 50-50 mix and it's a bit of a blended type of effect, you don't need to be super careful about where you put it, but try not to force this into the deepest, darkest shadows. Just stick to the bits that would hit the light. So you can flip the model and look at it from top down and any areas that you see, you can speckle on some of this color. This is going to end up being quite a subtle light transition, so don't be too alarmed if you can't immediately see a stark difference. It appears much better in person when you do this step, but on camera here it doesn't look like we've done all that much. Just trust that the areas that will catch more light have been given slightly more of a blue hue now. Now at any point during this process you might have a look and think you may have gone a bit too heavy or a bit too far with any of the transitions that you're doing. And if you think the model is lacking some depth or it all looks a bit too uniform, you can always go back and stipple on some of the base tone black that we use to either prime or base coat the model with. This is the reason I put the Molotow black on the palette, because this is the black that I used to initially base coat the whole model. And I think it's looking a little too uniform, so I'm going to go back with this black and just very lightly stipple over some areas to break up the colour and make it look less uniform and more textured and more battle damaged. This for me has to be one of the main reasons that I really love using this technique on Black Templars, because it's just so easy and flexible to go back and forth between your lights and darks and create an effect that really sells the texture of the model. So once you've gone back and forth a bit and established the blue grey tones previously and you're happy with them, it's time to move on to the final paint which is rust grey. For this I've switched out to a slightly smaller square of sponge because we're only applying a very small amount of this rust grey so we want to be able to control it a bit better where we're placing it. So once again we are loading the sponge in the exact same way, dabbing off maybe a little more paint than before just to make sure we're getting a very fine application. And this time, instead of being a bit loose and liberal about where we're placing this colour, we want to put this on the very extreme points of where the light will catch. So this is at the tops of panels or the very tips of circular objects or just in a very few accent places that we want to make jump out. Don't put this everywhere otherwise it really will look too blue and it will take away from the black. Don't forget at any point you can go back to the black or even the previous grey or blue grey colours that we mixed. It's a very natural way of painting so don't worry if you feel like you've gone too far on one particular step, especially this end step. Just get some of the previous colour and go back over the top and try again. If anything it will probably make it look a bit more random and a bit more natural. So this is where I've landed on my model. It's got a good separation between the darker and lighter tones and overall I think it looks pretty good. This is about as far as we're going to go for the sponging on this model. We've used it to create our battle damage and our underlying tone of the black armour and it's going to be a really good canvas to do the rest of the model on. So although we may have finished with the stippling on the black armour, we've not finished the black armour. In fact, we've got the most important step left for last, and that is going to be increased battle damage and a very, very fine edge highlight. And for this, we're going to use Celestra Grey. So the real trick here is to make sure that you catch all of the areas of the panels that will be hitting the most light. To be honest, for me, this is basically any panel that has the light facing up on it. I'm not going to go into the dark recess areas and try and edge highlight those, but I am going to get the majority of the edges of the panels. While I'm doing this, I'm also going to add a few extra dings and chips here and there, and also some scratches. This will really push the battle damage element of the armour. When you're doing the battle damage part of this, try and make sure to use the finest lines you can and connect them to the edge of a panel. This will make it look the most natural that it can. If you make any mistakes at this point or do a line that's a bit too thick and you're not happy with it, you can always tidy up with stippling the line out a little with the grey, black or blue-grey colour that we mixed up earlier when we were doing the stippling. 
And here's what the model looks like once you've worked around all of the surfaces and added a edge highlight and some battle damage. Although this isn't as a quick and easy step as the stippling before, it has a very important role. Not only does it help us define the very edges of the panels, but more importantly, it really pushes down the stippling that we did. Before the edge highlight, the stippling is the brightest thing on the model and it really stands out and looks a bit garish. But the second that we put an edge highlight on it, it really pushes it back into the back background a bit more, lets the highlight become the focal point and it all looks much more natural and much more black. So what I did next when I was filming this was a complete black oil wash over all of the black armour that we just done. Now with the benefit of hindsight in editing I think the armour looks a lot better before this step. The black oil wash has a tendency to monotone everything, so all of the really nice blue highlights that we established previously kind of get lost after this stage. So here's what the model looks like after the black oil wash, and here's another black Templar model that I've done since where I missed the black oil wash step. So kind of pick whichever black armour you prefer and go from there. The steps are all the same up to this point, I just did an oil wash on one and no oil or wash on the other. You may also have noticed that I have now added the head on to the model. This is just a really simple flesh tone that I do and I can do another video on it another time if it's of interest to anyone. But for now we're going to move on to the other elements of the model and the first being the metal. For this I'm using a 50-50 mix of scale colour heavy metal and Vallejo black. And then we're going to simply just paint this onto any parts of the model that you want to be metal. So on this one it's the lower parts of the gun casing, the vents on the backpack, I'm also painting the bits in between the leg joints and the chest eagle. So now we're going to finish off the weapon casings with red and for that we're going to use corn red. I'm then going to mix a little bit of yellow into the red just to make a slight highlight colour that we can catch a few of the edges with. So this is a nice simple step, we're just base coating the top half of the weapon in the corn red, waiting for that to dry, maybe doing a couple of layers if it's not going on completely well the first time. And then once we've mixed a little bit of yellow into the base colour, we're just going to run along the edges and pick out a very few highlights. Now with that done we're going to paint the leather areas and if you've seen any of my videos before you know I prefer a very quick and easy leather technique. For that we're going to base all of the leather areas in Zandri dust and then we're just going to give them a liberal wash of a brown ink. In this case I'm using Dale Rowney's Burn Umber. In the future I am going to make a separate video on how to paint a more detailed leather if you would rather a more detailed look but for now this will do because we're using the black armour as the focal point of the model, we can get away with skipping some steps on these smaller parts. Now while we still have the burnt umber ink on the palette, I've gone ahead and thinned it 50-50 with just some water and I'm going to use this as a glaze to tint the chest eagle. I'm hoping it will come out a kind of bronzy metallic colour. The new black Templar seems to have gone for gold chest eagles and I think that's maybe a bit too bright so I've gone for a slightly different bronze colour. So last but not least I am doing the ever important cream shoulder pads now and for that I'm going to use Pallid Witch Flesh. Now putting this colour over black is quite tricky, it's very chalky so just go slow and build up lots of layers and it will soon get nice and smooth. Again it's not the end of the world if you can't get it completely covered, because we're going for a bit of a battle damage starred marine it doesn't really matter that all the colours aren't perfect, if anything it just adds to the effect. Now that the cream shoulder pads are all finished I'm going to use some water transfers to add some Templar markings to them. This is a real simple step, you just want to cut these out, suck them in some water and then slide them onto the shoulder. I may also go over in more detail how I like to adhere these to the surfaces in a separate video, but all I really do is soak them in water, apply them to the shoulder and then using a bit of paper towel just apply some pressure as it dries. So once the transfers were all dry I went ahead and covered the whole model in a matte varnish just to see everything in because next up we're going to do a oil wash. I also went back with some pallid witch flesh and just added some battle damage to the transfers to make them fit in a bit more with the model. 
So what we're going to do with the burnt umber oil wash is instead of applying it all over the model we're instead going to thin it down quite a bit with some white spirit and do a panel line wash. Because of the low surface tension of the oil paint it will drag itself into all of the recesses just by tapping the brush to it. The burnt umber acts as a nice contrast between the cold metal colour of the black armour. So this is what the Templar looks like once we've finished the oil step. The last thing that I like to do is just go back over some of the metal areas with a nice bright silver colour. This helps redefine them and give them a metallic sparkle as the oil wash has a tendency to dry quite matte. So I'm just focusing on all of the highest edges and just giving them a nice edge highlight. So here he is, the finished model. I really hope that you've enjoyed watching the video and learnt a new technique along the way. Doing battle damage power armour with a sponge stippling effect is something that I'll definitely be using going forward. Anyway, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you again in the next video. Thanks a lot guys, take care.